The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, and on this show, we talk about the equipment found on your electronics workbench. When working with circuits with digital parts like a 555 timer, logic gates, counters, and shift registers, what kind of tools can you use to debug them? An obvious answer would be a logic analyzer, which we covered in a past episode. Or you can even use an oscilloscope. But these both require a certain amount of setup and can be overkill for just checking a couple of pins. This tool is called a logic probe, which is designed to probe logic circuits. We aren't very clever with the names we use for electronic tools, are we? In this video, I build up a digital circuit and show when a logic probe works great and when you might need something else, like a DMM. Okay, to explain how this probe works, I built a bit of a ridiculous circuit. It contains a 555 timer acting as a clock, driving a decimal counter chip, which then uses 7404 inverters to drive a seven segment LED display. And of course, I'm using current limiting resistors for each segment. The final circuit counts from zero to nine and then repeats. If you are totally new to these ICs, there are links to episodes of the learning circuit in the show notes. Karen has done an excellent job covering all of them already, which means we can focus on the problems I hit while building my circuit. Looking at the probe, there is a single sharp tip and two lights to tell the signal's status. But for those to work, you must connect the probe to both VCC and ground. This connection is one significant difference from a DMM. The logic probe needs its own power to make comparisons for high and low. When I touch my high impedance finger to the tip, high low indicates toggling or floating. On my 555, when I check pin four, we see a high since it is at VCC. Pin five is at ground, so it shows a low. Over on pin three, the output, we should see it toggle and the probe shows a low. That might mean that the 555 is not working. So let's see what the DMM says when we put that into frequency mode. Well, it sees hundreds of Hertz. It's supposed to be about three kilohertz, but these numbers are just random noise. Now it's time for a quick sanity check. First, let's make sure that the actual VCC voltage is close to five volts, and it is. Next, I turn off the supply and check the capacitors to see if they're the correct values. The timing capacitor is supposed to be 100 nanofarads, but the meter measures 86. That's actually not a big deal and I sort of expect it, so more on that later. So at this point, I had to step out of my discomfort zone and grab an oscilloscope to check the 555's output pin. Just like with the DMM, first I checked the VCC line to see a clean five volts. Looking at the output pin, the scope shows, well, nothing. So yeah, this circuit is not working at all. Looking back at the schematic, I forgot to connect the discharge capacitor to pin six. And that is also when I noticed that pin eight was connected to ground and not VCC. I made a quick switch and checked with my scope to see that pin three was now toggling. With those problems fixed, I checked the circuit again with the logic probe. Looking at pin four, it is high, and pin eight is now high, and pin three is both high and low. That means it is toggling which is what we wanted to see. Here was what I learned in this situation. I did not need the scope. If I had checked all of the pins on the 555 the first time with the logic probe, I would have found the VCC mistake. The DMM is still helpful since, like the one that I use, it can measure the 555's output frequency and check the other components like capacitors and resistors. Now that our circuit has a clock signal, time to move on to the next stage. The counter chip I am using is a Johnson Decade counter. With each clock pulse, it counts up one decimal digit from zero to nine, but its outputs are designed to drive a seven segment display. Because of the amount of wiring needed, first, let's use a quick trick to make sure that the counter is counting. A sanity check of the ground and VCC pins look good. 
Next, we look at the clock input pin, which we should see toggling from the 555. Then I can look at the ripple out on pin five, which should also be toggling. Long story short, the ripple out toggles at one tenth of the input clock's rate. Remember, if we wanted to verify the actual frequencies, we would need to get out the DMM. But for now, let's skip that step and get to wiring the LEDs. The counter chip expects a common cathode display, but the random one that I had in my kit uses a common anode. To make this circuit work, we need inverters. The 74HCT04 has six inverters, so annoyingly, we will need two inverter chips. Quick side note, the HCT inverters can source or sync up to 25 milliamps on their outputs. So with the use of current limiting resistors, we can skip transistor drivers for the LED segments and still protect the O4's output drivers. It took a few minutes to wire up all of the segments and admittedly, I did not do this as clean as I should have. If you have suggestions for wiring up a circuit like this, let me know over on the Element 14 community. I would love to hear them. Once done, I apply power and Wait a second, all seven LEDs are on. This circuit is supposed to be a counter. Shouldn't it be counting instead of just turning everything on? Grabbing the logic probe, I tested a single segment which shows the bit is toggling? Wait, what's up with this? Well, remember we set up the 555 to output about three kilohertz? Here's the part where I say I really didn't think ahead in building the circuit. I just wanted to show different ways to use a logic probe, which you got to see. The seven segment display was pretty much an afterthought. So when I saw all seven segments lit up, the LED above my head came on and I realized what happened. The LEDs are updating so fast that we ran into a persistence of vision problem. So to slow the 555 down, I swapped in a 100 microfarad capacitor. Now we see an update about every 500 milliseconds. And at this slower rate, the logic probe updates high or low when the segment gets accessed. Remember, before it was toggling back and forth so fast that we couldn't physically see when the bit was being used. Can you get away with just a logic probe for testing digital circuits? Well, eh, as you saw, it is constructive in seeing that something is or is not happening with a circuit, but it is really more of a debug tool. I do find it a little faster and easier than poking around with a DMM, especially since the readout is where your eyes are already looking. While an oscilloscope or logic analyzer might tell you more about the signals than either of those two tools, they do at least require more setup. Ultimately, I think the logic probe is a practical companion to a multimeter, especially if you're working with a lot of digital chips. But frankly, in my humble opinion, it's not usually a requirement to have one. That's my opinion, but I'd like to know what yours is. Why don't you head over to the Element 14 community and let me know. While you're there, you'll find a few resources. There are the show notes with links to the Learning Circuit episodes related to the components I mentioned and some logic pro projects that you can build yourself. By the way, that really is the best place to ask me questions because I'm more likely to see them. Thank you for watching another episode, and if you'll excuse me, it's time to get back to probing the highs and lows around my electronics workbench.